G'day guys, Dean from Blog for the Blood God here, and this video is going to be one of a three-part series where I'm going to be talking about various elements of the Chaos Space Marines and the Chaos Demons Codex. In part one, I'm going to be doing a detailed breakdown of the Night Lord's Legion, talking about their Warlord traits, their relics, their stratagems, and some of the different combos that you can achieve using the Night Lords. In part two, I'm going to be talking about how to combine Demons and Chaos Space Marines in the same list, regardless of what Legion you're playing. And then in part three, I'm going to take these two videos, smash them together, and I'm going to talk about a very specific Night Lords list that combines elements from the first video and from the second video to sort of put it all together and show you guys how it will actually affect on the table. So with that being said, let's get straight into the video. Walk for the Blood God. Alrighty guys, in today's video, I want to talk about a Night Lords list that I've written that's got some really interesting components. Now this is part three of a series where I'm talking about Night Lords and Demons. So if you missed part one, I did a masterclass on the Night Lords where I broke down every combination of Warlord traits, stratagems and relics. And I really did a deep dive on those and talked about one of the, the ones that I liked, the ones that I didn't like and the reasons why. So make sure you check out that video. Also, make sure you check out my Demons and CSM Allies video where I talked about the specific ways on how and when you add demons to a Chaos Space Marine list, what you gain and what you lose. There's a lot of information in that video that's going to be really relevant to this video. So if you haven't seen those two, I highly recommend you pause this one, you go back, you watch those two first, and then you watch this one. That being said, I'm going to do my best to make sure that this video is a standalone. So if you just really want to look at a Night Lord's list and get an understanding of it, you should be able to do that here as well. So with that being said, let's just jump straight into the list and then I'll break down each component separately. All right, so this is a Night Lords list. So we've got a Supreme Command Detachment with Abbott on the Despoiler. Then we have a Night Lords Battalion Detachment. In that detachment, we have a Demon Prince. He has wings, a sword, Mark of Slanesh, the Intoxicating Elixir, and the Dirty Fighter Warlord trait. Next, we have the Master of Possession. He has Pact of Flesh and Mutated Invigoration. In our troops choices, we have two units of 10 cultists and a unit of legionnaires. We have seven of them with chain swords, one with a heavy chain axe. All of them have the Mark of Corn Icon of Chaos. And then we have a champion with the Black Mace. Then we have 10 Chaos Terminators with the Mark of Slanesh and the Black Rune of Damnation on the champion. And we have two units of five Raptors. Then we have a Legionis Demonica Patrol Detachment who has a Bloodthirster with Indominal Onslaught and a unit of 10 Blood Letters. The idea with this list is that it has, well there's a few things happening here, but one of the main key elements is you've got a 10-man Terminator Brick that can start in Deep Strike and Deep Strike in turn one. Hyper aggressive up in your opponent's face. Then you have a unit of 10, uh, of eight Legionnaires, sorry, yeah, you know, nine legionnaires, so you've got the champion, you've got the heavy chain axe guy, plus seven chainsword guys, so nine. They go into Rhino with the Master of Possessions. And then basically, they're going to move out. The Master of Possessions is going to disembark. He's going to be able to cast his buffs on the Terminator unit. He's also going to be able to be a warp locus for subsequent turns. And you've got a legionnaire's unit with the Black Mace and Mark of Corn who are able to go in and do heavy damage. Then you're supporting this with two units of Raptors that are going to go out and they're going to project that Night Lord's negative three leadership. And they're also going to be able to raise banners and do various actions. Then on top of that, you have the uh, Demon Prince. He has the um, Intoxicating Elixir, which means once per game, he's going to be able to be phase capped like Abaddon and only take three wounds. So now you've got Abaddon, who's really hard to kill because he's phase capped. You've got a Demon Prince, who's really hard to kill because he's phase capped. And the Demon Prince also has the ability to make your opponent fight last. And because he's Mark of Slanesh, he has all his fights first. So that's a really powerful combo. I went through that in detail in my Night Lords video. But basically what that means is that in any situation, he's always going to be able to fight first. Whether he's charged or gets charged, or he charges things, or he charges something that makes him fight last, or he fight, you know, pretty much any combination, he's always going to be the guy that fights first. So that's really powerful. And he goes in basically up into the center. He'll do warp ritual, and then he'll either or he'll either do warp ritual or he'll put delightful agonies on those terminators. 
and then he's going to basically go punch anything that comes near him in the center. And as long as he ends, ends his psyche phase within six inches of that center, he can do more war ritual. So he's a real powerful objective scorer. He's also a really powerful killer, and he's really hard to put down. He's really hard to deal with. Then we have the demons component of the list as well, which has the bloodthirster who has the phase cap. So he can only take eight wounds per phase. So now we have three really big, really scary monsters that can only take three wounds per phase. That's fucking terrifying. And then also you've got a unit of 10 blood letters that are gonna either be able to support the front and contribute damage, or if your opponent tries to outflank you and tries to get in behind you into your own deployment zone, they're gonna be able to drop down and dig you out. And because you have the warp locus in the middle of the table, you've moved up with him, Terminator's in front, Legionnaire's behind, he's in the middle with the Demon Prince, you're gonna be able to deep strike that Bloodthirster. As long as it's within six inches of him, you're gonna be able to deep strike within six inches of your enemy, which means that Bloodthirster's going in with a six inch charge. So these are all really, really powerful combos. So I think this list has a lot of legs. It's gonna do a lot of damage. There are a few things that this list is going to struggle into, but one of the main like one of the main challenges, for example, is that it doesn't have a massive amount of secondary options. So you're probably going to be taking Warp Ritual all the time. You're probably going to be taking the Long War and Banners, unless your opponent gives up something particular like Assassinate or Bring It Down or something like that, in which case you might chop one of those out and put in something else. But Generally speaking, it's not going to score insanely high in secondaries. So you really need to make sure that you're playing hyper-aggressive with this to push your opponent back so that they deny them primary, so that you're going to get more primary points than they are. And also try to isolate one of the secondaries of theirs that you can fuck with and fuck with it as best you can. So for example, if they've taken Warp Ritual, go, okay, cool. Where are your psychers? I'm going to hunt your psychers down. Because if you can kill their psychers before they get their warp ritual off, you're going to now level that playing field where you're going to go, okay, cool, I'm not going to score very high on my secondaries, but neither are you. And that's really powerful swing. So I think the way to pilot this list is going to be you have to accept that you're probably going to get a couple of 12s and maybe a 9 for your secondaries. But if you play it aggressively, focus on that primary, kill as much of their shit as fast as you can, then you're gonna have a really strong opportunity here. And knowing that you can go turn one deep strike in those Terminators, they're in your opponent's face, they're getting the plus one toughness from the Master of Possessions, they're getting the Neg one to be wounded from the Black Rune of Damnation, they're getting Delightful Agonies potentially from the Demon Prince. They're gonna be really hard to shift and your opponent can't ignore them. You're in their face. So that's gonna be really powerful and that's gonna keep your opponent busy. Meanwhile, you've got your Raptors raising banners, flying around doing their thing. And then the beautiful thing is you can blow something up and now you're doing, your bloodthirst is sitting out in the middle, but your opponent has to deal with his phase lock. So they're gonna have to shoot him and then get into combat with him. And that's where he wants them. You know, same with the demon prince. He can get into combat with them. Cool, cool. make you fight last, kill you, you know? So I think there's some really interesting play in this list. I think it's really strong and I would like to see what you guys think. Have you guys played something similar? I know that this list doesn't lean too hard into the Night Lords in terms of Warlord traits and relics. I do have the Warlord trait Dirty Fighter, but I didn't take any of the Night Lords specific relics, even though there are some really good ones. Uh, and part of the reason with this is I wanted to lean a little bit more into the demon side of things. Uh, if you wanted to run a pure Night Lords list, what you would do is you just wouldn't take the demons, and therefore you wouldn't have to spend the two command points to get that patrol detachment, and then you would use those two command points potentially to give more traits and stuff to your other characters. But I wanted to sort of test out how to go with demons and night lords together in one list. So that sort of sums it all up. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I know this was a shorter video than some of my others. I sort of tried to do a bit of a, a breakdown where I break the video down into three parts. One where I go through all of the traits, relics, stratagems, another where I went through the demon stuff, and then a third where I went through the list. So. Let me know if you like that format, if you think that that's a good way to do it, or if you prefer that one like two hour long video where I go through everything from start to finish. I personally think that these smaller ones are probably a little bit more easily digestible because you can listen to it on the drive to work if you've only got a 20 minute drive, off you go, happy days. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. And uh, yeah, I look forward to continuing to generate new content with you guys 
huge thank you to my patrons. They're the ones that have inspired this and um, they really give me the motivation to go all in on this project. So I really do appreciate that. And I'm hoping to get to a point where I can generate enough money from my Patreon that I can stop working 50 hours a week in a warehouse. I'm hoping that I can get that down to working four days a week so that I'm able to spend a day a week generating content or maybe get it down to even working three days a week and spend a couple of days generating content. I know it's a big ask and I really do appreciate those who are helping me achieve that goal, but that's where I'm headed and that's what I would really like to do. I'd like to be able to do a battle report every week. I'd like to be able to do two or three of these style tactics videos a week. And then I'd like to be able to do two or three different like, you know, other general content. So I want to be able to do a video every day. However, working 50 hours a week in a warehouse makes that impossible. So I can only do it with your support and those who do support, I very much appreciate it. So thanks again for tuning in. Make sure you fill out that comment section. That's where we get a lot of the good work done. That's where we you know, iron out these things. It's always really valuable. So thank you for that and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. The Warhammer community suffers from some of the most prohibitively expensive essentials in the world, especially Australian content creators. Every single day, Dean wants to create content, but he can't. Suffering from old, worn-out brushes, expensive model kits, and costly software and equipment, he can't endure much longer. Just look at this dirty paint water. Would you drink this? Would you let your child? Even a small monthly donation can help provide Dean with clean paint water, basic tools for survival, and access to life-saving information and education. So please, follow the links in the description below and find out how you can sponsor a mad cunt like Dean today and end the suffering. Suffering that is cruel, unsustainable, and your fault. Do your objective markers ever get lost behind terrain or other models and become difficult to see? Do they ever get bumped and accidentally moved during a game? And do they ever spark arguments about distances? Well, not anymore. Introducing the blog for the blood god, not even remotely patented, neoprene objective markers. Made from the same material as astronaut suits, or maybe military equipment, or probably neither of those things, this two millimeter thick neoprene synthetic rubber is tear resistant, water resistant, and is designed to last. But that's not all. The blog for the blood god, not even remotely patented, neoprene objective markers come in a variety of different designs and styles to suit any faction represented in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. These objective markers are a perfect gift for yourself or a friend and are a perfect way to flex and show your opponent that not only are you a smarter, cooler, and better 40k player than them, but you also have more disposable income than they do. For the low price of $25, you'll get not one, not two, but six neoprene objective markers perfectly designed for 9th edition Warhammer 40k. But wait, there's more. For a limited time only, People who sign up on Patreon to support Blog for the Blood God as a Skull Champion tier $5 per month member will gain access to a custom design service where I will design a unique logo to support their gaming club like the one I did to the left here for the Potato Farmers local gaming club here in Melbourne. Follow the links in the description of this video to pick up your set today.